my channel and truly welcome back because I know I've been gone for a really long time okay a freakish amount of time between moving across country and just being in a reading rut and just all kinds of other things going on 2020 hasn't been my year for reading but I'm finally out of my reading rut and today I wanted to talk about the book that finally got me out of it and it was this guy this is the invisible life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and hmm let me tell you, I devoured this novel. It has gotten me out of my rut. I have now read more books in the last three weeks than I've read in an entire year, including in 2019. I don't know what's happened, but it, it started a fire and I'm here to talk about the book today. I'm gonna be basically breaking up this video in a few different segments. So if you want to not have any spoilers, this first little bit will have no spoilers in it. But as the video progresses, I will get into more spoiler territory because I'm gonna start discussing motifs and ideas and themes throughout the book or just general things that I would like to think about. And I haven't really seen anyone discussing any of these things amongst the community. So I just wanna kinda of open up discussion and you'll need to have read the book, so there will be some spoilers if you haven't. I don't know why you would get into the discussion part if you haven't read it, but I just wanna let you guys know that. I will be putting timestamps in my description and they should pop up on the play bar for you guys to see like where those things are coming. So if you just want the summary, I'm about to get into the general summary of the novel right now to see if this is something you would be interested in reading. And if that's all you wanna know, then after that, just click out of the video. But if not, if you've already read it and you just wanna hear a general review and talk about the book, keep watching. So like I said, this is the newest novel from V.E. Schwab. It was released just a couple months ago. And the first synopsis I ever saw of it definitely described it as a romance and I immediately wrote it off. If you don't know my, my reading preferences, which I don't know why you would unless you've asked, I don't like romance. It's literally my least favorite genre. I don't like it. I'm apparently a cynic. I at first wrote it off, but then I saw a later synopsis and this is kind of the one, I, I pulled the one off of Goodreads to kind of give you guys a general idea and that's basically what changed my mind. And I was like, you know what? I'll pick this one up and read it. So the synopsis is, this is a book set in France in the 1700s, 1714 to be exact. And it follows a young girl named Addie LaRue or Adeline LaRue. So in a moment of desperation, a young woman makes a Faustian bargain to live forever and is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets. I was hooked. No romance at all. I was like, you know what? I love the, the concept of immortality. I love the concept of living through multiple time periods. I love that. Sign me up. Thus begins the extraordinary life of Addie LaRue and a dazzling adventure that will play out across centuries and continents, across history and art, as a young woman learns how far she will leave her mark on the world. Again, pretty hooked, interesting. The whole concept of traveling through times, seeing different things, seeing history kind of play out in front of you without realizing that history is playing out in front of you, kind of like how I feel about 2020. It's playing out in front of us. It doesn't really feel like history because it's happening right now. It'd be interesting to read a novel with that kind of concept in the forefront. But everything changes when after nearly 300 years, Addie stumbles across a young man in a hidden bookstore and he remembers her name. So at the end, of course, there's that twinge of, oh, there's gonna be romance there. The romance for me in this novel is really understated, which thank goodness, because I just, again, don't care for romance. Again, I saw other synopsises that were talking more about Addie falling in love with the devil that curses her, essentially, in this book. And I could see how people would be very disappointed reading this and thinking this is gonna be a romance because this is not a romance. Overall, this is a pretty character-driven, plot-heavy, flowery book. If you aren't into a flowery writing style and an almost poem-esque candence within the book, you're not gonna like this. You're just not. I think the best advice I could give you, if you get 100 pages into this book and it's not flowing for you or it's not working, it's not gonna work because the style of writing is very targeted, I feel like. If you don't like purple prose, essentially, something that's very ornate and flowery and there's just a lot of kind of cadence and repetition, you're gonna hate it. There's a lot of repetition in this book. It really drives home a lot of things because it's so heavily reliant on metaphors as well. 
And so if that's something you're not looking for, you're not going to like this. I would also like to say V.E. Schwab's other novels are typically more fantasy based, in my opinion, a lot of fantasy and action based. This one isn't. I would almost put this as just a literary novel, not in any other genre because it kind of falls in between a lot of things. And I feel like it's a novel that you can truly dissect for different kind of themes throughout it and different kinds of symbols you can pull from it. You can, you can pull a lot from this novel without it just strictly tying into one genre. So I would say this is a literary genre. So if you only like fantasy, if you only like romance, I think you're gonna get touches of all of those things in this book but it's not, I don't personally think that's the forefront of this novel at all. I, I like to kind of compare this book to, it's almost like watching an indie film because it's kind, that's kind of what it feels like. It's very atmospheric. Again, it has that almost a poetic narrative rather, and it can be a little jarring to go from like purple prose into dialogue, which is kind of difficult. So again, the writing style, I think, is the main thing to focus on. If you can't get into it, I don't think you will. Moving beyond the writing style, I think the novel is set up in a way that is really conducive to understanding the main character, which is Addie. The book is split between two different time periods, Addie in the past, which is where we start out in the 1700s with Addie in France, and split between modern day, basically 2013, 2014 is the modern day of the novel. So you, you split between those two time periods and it flips and flops back. I could see that being annoying for some people because it does get a little repetitive. You don't get as much history as I was kind of expecting. I thought that would be a lot, a larger part of it, but it wasn't, but it wasn't really, I had a misconception of where I thought the novel was going with that kind of idea of her traveling through history and living through it. There's not much history based in it, which I think it could have been really interesting to see how a French girl from the early 1700s functions in like World War One and Two. You get touches of it, not too much, but it, it really isn't necessary for what I think the main aim of this novel is. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not gonna get a historical fiction here either. It's just not gonna happen, but if there's a book out there like that, I would totally jump on that one because it would be very interesting to know what that would be like. I also think the introduction of characters is really useful and beneficial. We meet a lot of people through Addie and we never develop a relationship with them ourselves as readers because they forget Addie. So there's a lot of people that kind of come into the narrative and then disappear after a little bit, which I think is fitting for the premise of this book. She's cursed by a, a, a devil so she can't be remembered. So it, it feels that way. It does get a little harder to make connections with certain characters and even sometimes to make connections with Addie because of that, because everyone else is forgetting her. And so I think there is this nice kind of like juxtaposition of things moving quickly in some ways, but also being really heavy in other ways because it's kind of the point. She's, she's meant to be forgettable, but also rememberable at the same time. It's supposed to be, I think, a juxtaposition of those two points. I'm gonna move into a little bit more spoilery territory, kind of. I'm not gonna like fully flesh out plot points because I, I just don't think there's a point. If you've read this novel, this is the point forward where I would love to have a discussion with you guys in the comments because again, I haven't really seen many people talking about some of these things. Rather, it's just been a dissection of the writing style and just general thoughts on characters. But I have some thematic things I would like to talk about or symbols that I would like to talk about. And I'd like to hear your thoughts if you've read this book. I'm gonna start out with my feelings on the book and just my general overview of how I think it ranked. I rank it five out of five stars. It's one of the better books I've read in a really long time. Like I said, it got me out of my rut. I loved it. I, I thoroughly connected with Addie as a character, which I didn't think I would at first. And at first it did feel, like I said, a little bit of a disconnect with her because you're kind of moving back and forth between times. It's hard to get a grasp of a character sometimes, but overall I found that Addie was tenacious and stubborn and I relate to the stubbornness. She also had this extreme primal drive to live and I think I would have given up if I was Addie at an earlier point, like I don't think I would have persevered in the same way Addie did. And so at the end of it, I ended up admiring her because I don't think I would want to live forever. I've talked about this in my circle of friends. Immortality is fascinating to me, but the concept of it isn't for me. I don't think I would want to live through hundreds and hundreds of years. I think I would have been unsuccessful in regard to how Addie was successful in surviving a curse that I don't think she ever really meant to place on her. 
Now, a lot of the synopsises that I see, I think are misleading. They say that Addy asked for immortality. I don't think Addy ever asked for immortality. I think that's one of the crueler things about the curse that the devil gave her or the demon gave her. I don't want to call him the devil because he's not technically Lucifer. It depends on what kind of theology we want to go down, what we think he is, but Luke is a demon, a old god, a shadow figure. He's something. He, he is something that possesses darkness and um, has a cruel sense of humor, or no sense of humor, whichever way you want to look at it. But he ends up giving her immortality as a joke, and I, I guess that's the thing. It was a joke to him. He didn't think she would survive, and if it was was me, I wouldn't have survived, which I think is why I ended up connecting with Addie so much, because I was like, oh wow, she's like kind of a badass. Like she's like, you know what? You said I could have all of these things for as long as I'm able to handle it, and uh, joke's back on you. I can handle it. Try again, sir. She was adventurous. She was not shy at all. She was very outgoing, which is like the opposite of me. She's definitely an extrovert if you look at it that way. And just generally just kind of interesting. Like I, she's interesting to me. I know a lot of complaints with V.E. Schwab's writing is that she creates these female characters that are unlike the other girls. And I know that's a big problem with V.E. Schwab's writing. I noticed it more in the Darker Shade of Magic series with the character of Lila. This one, I didn't notice it as much. I don't feel like Addie comes off as, I'm not like the other girls kind of trip. It, do it didn't come off that way to me, but I could see how some people might think that. I, I, again, just thought her character was overall really interesting. As for the like semi-romance in the book, Henry is a character that I, really enjoyed but also didn't feel as connected with and i think that's also for a reason i think because and this is again spoiler territory i think because henry is temporary but crucial you have some feelings of fondness for henry but you never develop a full like a full developed understanding of him we get bits and pieces of how henry functions and he is entirely the reason why this novel moves forward in any, any way. I know a lot of people think that the romance was supposed to be there. The romance isn't isn't supposed to be there because this is a matter of almost convenience. It, we, have, we have two extraordinary people that have both been cursed and their curses have now worked to bring them together, which is another cruel joke from t the shadow god, from Luke, because he knew it was happening and he thought it would break Addie. This is another moment where I was like, oh, Addie is much stronger than I am because that would have broke me knowing how these curses play out together. It's very cruel and unusual and it didn't break her. So I found it interesting. I don't think Henry was supposed to be as, Henry isn't the main character obviously. So I don't think we're supposed to have a well-developed feeling towards Henry in any way. I think Henry is a driving force for Addie and shows her the power that she can have going into the curse that is on her. And what I mean by that, one of the things that stuck out to me, and this is kind of a discussion point, was when she meets Henry and she's been cursed now for 300 years, she hasn't been able to say her own name, she can't write her own name, Luke has made it to where no one will remember her, her name has now become non-existent. And for me, I didn't realize names had so much power, I guess, because a name is just something that's given to us and you know, you can call people whatever, and if, if they have some kind of connection with it, they'll answer, you know? Like you could be called, hey you, and sometimes people will, re will respond, you know? So for me at first, I was like, I don't understand the connection. But after Addie meets Henry, I was like, oh, there's the power of her name coming back because she heard him use it. She was able to use him to write her own name and it was like power was given to her. That there was a way for her to undo, undo the curse or to work around it in a way that would make her powerful. And I think ultimately that's what's happening is it's a power play between Luke and Addie. And it's interesting to me that they used, or that V.E. Schwab used the power of your name to kind of talk about that because like, what is a name? It's a nice literary play, you know? Like, what is a name? Why do our names have such strong holds on us and why are names so important? And I think the novel plays, plays with that really well and clearly shows that in reclaiming her name, she reclaimed some power, which I thought was really interesting. But let me know your thoughts. Did you all also have that, that feeling towards that part of the novel? Was that a big thing for you that you noticed that was 
just again, interesting to kind of think about and be like, oh, well, does my name really have that much power for me? Is like using my name really like empowering for me? Another thing that I harped on and I saw a lot of people complain about this was Addie's freckles. I think Addie's freckles have so much more meaning than just being blemishes on her face. For one, it is the cover of the novel. There are seven stars on the novel, which is what Addie's freckles look like. They're supposed to look like seven stars across her face. It's a constellation. I don't think the picking of the number seven was by accident. Seven is typically, again, depending on what theology we wanna look into, it's typically a lucky number in most Western societies. So I think that number is entirely intentional. Also, I feel like the fact that it is brought up so often, and I know this annoyed people in the novel that it was brought up. It's like, yeah, okay, we get it. She has seven freaking freckles. We get it. But I think there's a reason why. It's kind of like the, the use of a lot of metaphors. I think this is also a metaphor. And I'm not sure exactly what I think it's supposed to represent, but it's the number seven, which is lucky. And then seven freckles that are supposed to look like a constellation of stars, which she's cursed by a demon of darkness. I don't know if this is supposed to again, bring up the entire feeling that Addie is powerful because it almost aligns her godlike. And I don't know enough about, about gods, like old gods in France, but I have a feeling maybe kind of like Greek gods, they live among the stars typically, or they live up in the sky is typically what we see even in modern theologies. So I, I almost want to think that's what it is. I think it's supposed to represent a juxtaposition between Luke, the, de the dark darkness demon, and Addie being almost godlike, but being cursed. It's, it's, I, I can't quite put my hand on what it's supposed to quite be, but I feel like it's important. And I haven't seen anyone discussing this other than with distaste. So I'd just be curious what you guys took from the novel as far as what the freckles are supposed to represent, because it's definitely supposed to mean something. It's not just the constant harping on freckles for no reason. There, there's a reason why that's there. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but I feel like it has something to do with aligning Addie with gods almost. And then we have Luke as the darkness, the light and the dark. I feel like that there's something there, right? And then the last thing that I wanna talk about, it's less a discussion point and more of something interesting. And I don't know if this was intentional either, but a lot of the complaints I saw again, and I mentioned this early on, was the poetic cadence of the narrative, like of the writing style. I think this was also intentional because in the 1700s, poetry was a big deal in France. We call it French poetry for a reason. It is an entire genre on its own. And it was a big deal starting in this time period. So I think it was entirely intentional that the writing was done this way. It also, when I was reading it, it reminded me of like the rolling hills in France, like the flowery hills of the countryside in France. And it just kind of evokes this kind of mysticism almost around the novel. And I think it was intentional. There's also a few points where Addie talks about men and almost like this misogynistic culture, which I think is another reason why the poetry kind of style of writing is interesting because it was dominated by men at the time. So I think this is another way of Addie kind of taking control of something and making it her own, which I found super interesting. I think it was entirely intentional by V.E. Schwab because that's not typically her writing style. It was very different. And for me, having read a bunch of her other stuff, I was like, there's a, I, I wonder what the reasoning behind that is. And then I remembered French poetry started around this time period and was a huge deal, especially among nobles, which Addie wasn't a noble. She was a poor girl from France. So for her to use a style that's reminiscent of French poetry, I think is another just, kind of token for Addie's personality and who she is as a whole. And I thought it was interesting, but again, would love to know your thoughts about that as well. I know I brought up a lot of talking points, but I, I like discussing books more than anything. Again, think this is more of a literary novel than anything. So I think there is room for discussion and analyzing in this one. And overall, I just loved this book. I loved the way it ended. I audibly said, wow, out loud when I finished this book. And I just think it's a really well done piece. I know it won't be for everyone, but nothing is. Like every, there's, there's gray areas in everything. You'll love it, you'll hate it, and everywhere in between. So just know, no matter how you felt about this book, it is fine. We are all entitled to feel differently about books. And I just like discussing them. So again, let me know what you guys thought of the book, if you've read it, if you're going to read it, if you just watched the summary. 
don't know why you're here. You were just supposed to watch the summary. But if you have read the book and you loved it or hated it or anything in between, let me know down in the comments as well as all of the discussion points. I would love to talk about all things books with you guys. And I'm glad to have started out with this guy. This was a solid read and I'm very excited. I got my hands on it. Signing out now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.